of it and filter out what you're interested in. We know where this road ends because so many societies have walked down it before us. We know where it ends, even though every step can be justified. Some musicians and artists are opposed to the Pirate Party and its file-sharing campaign, but they're reluctant to go on the record. This man, Alexander Bard, is not. He says some activists have intimidated critics of the party. We have some really aggressive behaviour going on, especially from the anarchist section of the Pirate Party. And they've been personally threatening artists for the past, say, 18 to 24 months in Sweden. And a lot of artists now are reluctant to speak out and, and say what they think. And not only artists like musicians, they're established people, because they can always call the police if somebody's threatening them. But more younger creative people like um, computer game makers, web designers, other people who are incredibly worried about the success of the Pirate Party and who are against their agenda. The Pirate Party says it doesn't encourage such behaviour, but admits that Sweden is engaged in a fiery debate. And even among music-loving festival-goers, there is ambivalence about the Pirate Party. They don't have any, any opinion in some very important questions. They are just anonymous in very important questions. And I think that's not good at all. So you just think in 2009 they were lucky? Yes. yes. I hope that. But even if they did disappear tomorrow, the Pirate Party could claim to have permanently changed the tune of politics. The youth wings of all Sweden's major political parties have passed resolutions backing the Pirates' policies. They've got the country dancing to a different beat, and the music's being listened to far beyond Sweden's shores. Matt Roger reporting there. Let's have a quick look at tomorrow morning's front page.